Hello, and welcome to Functions and Their Representations. This is going to be a college algebra level look. So let's start with a definition. A function represents a relationship between two or more variables. When only two variables are present, each input value must correspond to exactly one output value. That is, we cannot have a relationship that takes a single input that leads to multiple outputs. Let's take a look at a quick example. Well, we're going to call this function location. At 10 a.m. on a specific Tuesday, you could be in only one place. You cannot be in bed at your house and also at work on campus in a lab. Right? The function location takes each person as an input and has their current location as an output. While each person under consideration may be in a separate location, they could all congregate for the Saturday football game as well. Multiple inputs may end up in the same output, but a single input, a single person, cannot be in multiple locations, multiple outputs. All right, so if you always take it back to input people, output locations, a person can only be in one place at a time. However, multiple people can all be in the same place. That really shows you how a function works. So let's take a look at some examples for each uh, of the given sets. Determine in the relation, uh, determine if the relationship Look at that little spelling error. Uh, someone really needs to proof these because obviously I'm not doing my job. Uh, determine if the relationship described represents that of a function. Well, I see that 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 5, 4 goes to 4, and 5 goes to 3. That's cool. So all the inputs, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, all go to a unique place. So this is a function. Fantastic. Let's look down in example two. All right, our b is a function defined by this, possibly a function we don't know yet, defined by this set of ordered pairs. Three goes to one, four goes to two, five goes to three, four goes to four, and three goes to five. I have a problem here. How can three go to one and five at the same time? How can four go to two and four at the same time. This is not a function. All right, so it's not a function. Uh, looking at numerical representations is one way of representing functions. Uh, if we, I'm gonna make this look a little better here. Let's put that on the next page, there we go. If we're given equations, we can also determine if they represent functions. I determine if y is a function of x. For any x I put in, uh, say 2, any example whatsoever, if x equals 2, then y equals 2 squared, which is 4. There's only one answer that comes out, and I know it proof by example is not proof enough, um, but it seems to lead to the fact that this is a function. Similarly, at y plus 3x equals 7, I can randomly choose any x value I want. Let's throw an if in front of that, because we're just testing things. If x equals 0, then y equals 7. There were no options, and if I choose any other number, uh, it looks like there's never going to be an option on y. So this is a function. Not just with this particular uh, choice of variable, but also uh, a function. Uh, in general, it's going to be a function. Now here, what if x equals 4? If. Then y squared equals 4, and we know that any time that we apply the square root to both sides, we have to use plus or minus. So in this case, there are two outputs for one input. And this one is not a function. In general, and this is a, a cheater's rule, kind of a, a quick and dirty, it's not, I would say it's always true, but we'll see. 
Uh, if the variable y, the output variable, is squared or any even power, it's probably not going to be a function. If it's an odd power, it still could be. Right? But if your output does not have any powers on it, it's not in radicals, if it's just a, a single y variable, um, then it's most likely going to be a function. So how could we represent these functions? So in general, there are four ways we could represent a function. Each representation has its specific uses, but they are all connected. Verbal representations. These are word problems, also known as world problems or models. Verbal representations of functions help us to describe the world around us. This is why math is so useful. Everybody always asks, why do we need word problems? And then everybody also asks, uh, what is this ever good for? Well, word problems are answering that, those verbal representations. The location example that we started this lecture with, that's a verbal representation of a function because I described it with words. We might also have a numerical representation. These functions are often expressed in tables or data sets. Uh, as in our second example, I don't remember the second example and I just went there. Oh yes, mm -hmm. table of values, yep, data sets. I knew that. Uh, we measure our world constantly, and it's in this data that we uh, track that helps us to model and predict what happened in the past, present, and future. For example, consider the high temperatures recorded for a certain city during a certain week. Uh, on Monday, high temperature is 93. On Wednesday, high temperature is 97. On Friday, the high temperature was 95. Notice on Monday, say, uh, I don't know, maybe it was 1... Oh, that's probably bad. Let's go with, uh, I live in the northern hemisphere, so let's go with 714, 716, and 718 of whatever year I hope I happen to randomly imagine here. On Monday, July 14th of this year, there was only one high temperature for this particular location. It's a certain city. So this will also be a function. This is data that you see every day in a, a newspaper, say, if you still read the newspapers. A symbolic representation. These are formulas that most people associate with mathematics. They're also called algebraic functions. All right, so um, the algebraic representations and graphical representations. A graph is a visual representation of the input and output in a coordinate system. So these last two we normally think of as mathy, all right, algebra and graphs. But the verbal and numerical is why we have these other two. That's where they come from. All right, so let's get a little more technical. Instead of calling these input and output, let's refer to them as their, their mathematical terms. Definition, the domain of a function is a set consisting of all possible inputs for the function. So in our first example, it would be all the people under consideration. The range of a function is a set consisting of all outputs for the function under consideration. So in our first example, the range would be all possible locations. Right. So using the location example above, as I just said, uh, domain is all people and range consists of each location. So this will give us a formal definition of a function and that's what we'll do here in college algebra that makes it different from intermediate algebra is the for more formal ways of defining our mathematical terms. So a function is a relation in which each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. All right, let's look at some uh, examples. Let f be the function defined by f of 1 equals 2, f of 2 equals 3, and f of 3 equals 4. If I want to write f as ordered pairs, uh, f consists of the set where 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 4. Set notation has a little squiggly brackets uh, and I separate each of the ordered pairs by parentheses. Our domain is the set of 1, 2, and 3. It's all the inputs and our range will be the set of outputs 2, 3, and 4. Let's make at least one. Ah, that's not a good squiggly bracket. Squiggly. There we go. I believe it's called a brace. Maybe a bracket. I don't know. Technical terms. All right. Domain inputs, range outputs. Let's look at another function. 
the function f computes the revenue in dollars per unique user for different technology companies. This function is defined by f of Apple equals 95, f of Google equals 150, f of Facebook equals 79, and f of Yahoo is 50. So I might write f as the set of ordered pairs. Uh, I'm just going to use the first letter. Apple is 95. Uh, Google is 150. Facebook is 79. And Yahoo will give us 50. Alright, so we've written F as a set of ordered pairs. Input, output, input, output, always. Notice the input is inside the parentheses. Right, so it's another way to remember that. The domain, I swear that's an M, is the set consisting of Apple, Google, Facebook, and Yahoo. Hard not to put the exclamation mark on that. The range for this particular function is the set of outputs, 95, 150, 79, and 50. All right, so what does that actually mean? Uh, looking at the description, F computes the revenue in dollars per unique user. So for the revenue, of a Yahoo is a fifty dollars per unique user. Oh my goodness, Google's making a killing in this example. All right, so think about what the function states it is in dollars per unique user. So for the revenue of Yahoo, it will be a fifty dollars per unique user. All right, so use the description of the function to help you interpret what the function actually means. All right, the domain agreement, unless otherwise stated, the domain of a function f is the set of all real numbers for which it is algebra, uh, its algebraic or symbolic representation is defined. Huh? So the domain is all real numbers where it works. The functions we deal with in college algebra will have a domain of all real numbers except rational functions cannot have a denominator of zero, so we look for denominators. Radical functions with an even index cannot have a negative radicand. And logarithmic functions cannot have a non-positive argument. All right, so with we'll deal with each of these as they come, but this is the overall uh, domain agreement. I don't know who agreed on it, but that's what we call it. Um, if a function doesn't have a variable in a denominator, if a function does not have a radical, if a function does not have a logarithm, then it's all real numbers. The domain is all real numbers.